Food adulteration is one of the hot topics in food quality assurance for some years now. Adulteration is not just an economical crime. It also puts the consumer's health at risk. You probably know the case where milk was adulterated with melamine and six babies died and several thousands got serious health problems. As you can imagine, food fraud and food adulteration have a very long history. But did you know test kits to discover food adulteration also have a long history? I have an example here for you how adulteration of wine was detected. Wine was also a very popular drink in Roman times. However, the Romans were particularly fond of sweet and sometimes spiced wines. In the absence of sugar, they came up with another technique to sweeten wines. They cooked the must, the unfermented grape juice, to concentrate the sugar content and added the concentrated must to the wine. This technique is still used, legally, nowadays for some specific wines. The Romans also found out if they used leaden vessels to cook the must, the sweetness was even stronger. With our knowledge of today of chemistry, this is well explainable. The lead from the vessels reacts with the acetic acid from the wine and forms lead acetate. And lead acetate tastes sweet. The lead containing sweetener of wine was called sapa. And it was a well accepted technique to correct wines. Lead acetate is, as we know now, also quite toxic and heavy wine consumption in Rome must have caused lead poisoning on top of the negative effects of alcohol overuse. The Sapa trick was still known in the late 16th and early 17th century when it became more and more difficult to produce drinkable wines in some parts of Europe. Grapes ripened very poorly in for example southern Germany due to the colder summers and lead sugar was often used to make wines drinkable. Excessive use of lead caused, however, quite often acute lead poisoning, a disease known as Colica pictonum. End of the 17th century, Eberhard Kokkel, the city physician of Ulm in the Duchy of Württemberg, in nowadays southern Germany, connected this Colica pictonum to excessive use of lead sugar in wine. As a response, the Duke of Württemberg issued an edict in 1696 against the use of lead sugar, punishable with rather draconic punishments. The loss of life, honor and fortune. Particularly interesting, an analytical method is mentioned. The so-called Württemberg wine test. Which is not a very good method though, because the method suffered from a lack of specificity, leading to false positive results. As the knowledge about chemistry increased, an improved testing method was developed by Samuel Hahnemann in 1787. The new method was based on the reaction of a hydrogen sulfide solution with lead ions, giving a black precipitate. A very easy to use, clear to read, targeted method to detect the wine adulterant. This method was soon adopted in legislation as the official method to detect wine adulteration with lead sugar. Even more, the legislation stated the method should be available from every pharmacy for the sum of vier gute groschen, which was probably a very reasonable price. So for more than two centuries, a specific food fraud legislation was in place, a targeted analytical method published, and an easy to use test kit commercially available. It banned this particular form of food adulteration effectively. Food fraud is still an important issue today and has many continuously changing faces. Food adulteration is not just an economical crime, but may put the health of consumers at risk as the melamine adulteration of milk in 2008 or the peanut adulteration of cumin in 2015 showed. It will take a multidisciplinary approach of the food industry food scientists, regulators, law enforcement, economists, market analysts and analytical method developers to solve and prevent these food crimes.